Good morning, everybody. Um, I guess the uh, first thing I want to say is thank you for being here. Uh, this is a topic that I guess no, doesn't have too much traction I, currently, but I think that's the main reason we're doing it. Um, we feel like this is one of those uh, things that everybody knows is going on, but uh, it doesn't really, people doesn't, doesn't even think about it. Uh, so you know a little bit about me. I'm uh, from Colombia, South America. I lived here uh, for 13 years, and I've been working mainly in senior living since then. I'm an architect, and uh, the one thing that gives me that background is I'm kind of biased about this. I'm kind of a hybrid, as I say there, because I do have uh, like a little bit of both uh, worlds. I like here, I live here, my family, I got my family, wife, and kids in here, but I also have my background in Colombia. So I feel like what I'm going to do in 30 years from now, and as I'm thinking about, let's, let's, let's see the statistics and see what's, what's happening, how these minorities are growing up in the uh, United States. So you start looking at what's the ethnic composition in the um, United States, and the first thing I thought it was important to ask myself is what that means, what is ethnicity, what ethnicity really means. And, um, you start looking at the, that is, ethnicity is not just races. We're talking about uh, cultures. We're talking about countries. We're talking about uh, religion. There's so many different ethnicities or groups that you can think of that are actually right now kind of being taken care of in some religious ways, but not necessarily in a race, in a race or um, in a different um, uh, ethnic group. So when you look at what's going on right now, you see the 65 plus, there's 21%. Uh, uh, are in the, from a racial, uh, from a minority. And you think about African Americans being 9% and Latino being 7%, which is the largest or the fastest growing minority in the United States. So when you look at the next um, 40 years, and I think we're going a little far, but I think this is thinking about 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you know that, uh, and this is a general fact, uh, which is in 2050, there's going to be 65, <clears throat> there's going to be 88.5 million seniors in the United States, which is more than double that is currently happening. And out of those 88.5 million seniors, there's going to be a, a large group, about a 21% of um, minorities. Hispanics in 2003 became the largest minority in the United States. And one thing is happening too is that when you start looking at some of the numbers on the next slide, you see the, the, the population from 09, 30, and 50 actually declining from a white uh, Point, uh, I mean, ethnicity, and it's growing in the black, Hispanic, and Asian. Hispanic becoming almost the second largest. You see 20 million versus 11 million from uh, black ethnicity. So a fact is, in the United States, uh, in the next uh, decade, it's, uh, the older population is going to become more racially and ethn ethnically diverse. And it's not just the population. We're also talking about uh, caregivers and people coming from other countries to serve your community. So how are you addressing that? The second side, the other side of the coin, as I call it here, is now we're talking about, we know that there's a, it's, a, it's a fact here, minorities in the United States, but what's happening overseas? How are we looking at the, um, at the other countries? So we look at Latin America, China, India, and you look at this list of countries in here and how this population is growing in the next 30 years. So you see the United States is duplicating its population in percentage, but if you look at India, China, Japan, Mexico, Brazil, they're almost triple or four times the population, meaning there's a big market out there. We all know we're, we all are aging, and it's not any different there. So when you think about China, China's got about, it's going to have about 300 million seniors by 2025, and, and India's going to have 118 by 2016. So that make, make us think, what are we doing for that? So we start thinking about how we start educating people in other countries. So we have this prototype in China going on right now, which is a hotel conversion. Uh, we as designers are looking at that in, a, in the concept of how we educate other countries and how we do it and how that's opening markets for us in many ways, not just uh, from a designer's standpoint, but from an operation standpoint. And just start looking into, I was talking with clients here the other day and it's like, why don't you think about your community having a, a hub in Mexico? Why can't you have an operation in um, Costa Rica? Why not? That might sound crazy today, but in maybe uh, 10 years from now, why not? How many people know the benefit of living in South America in terms of cost of health care, cost of uh, living, how many people, uh, how the people is friendly, uh, the weather is perfect. So there's all those factors bringing in. So the one thing I want to let you with is that you need to be creative, adapt to change, and always be thinking forward. And look at these emerging markets as an opportunity that we don't have the answer for yet, but we for sure are looking for it. And um, it's going to be the thing in 15 or 20 years. So thank you. <laughs>